most compassionate of all creation, who in thine incomparable tenderness you did send down thine only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, for the salvation of our kind, and through the precious cross did tear us under the handwriting of our sins, thereby triumphing over the principalities and powers of darkness. Do thou the same, Lord, O Master and Lover of mankind. Accept also these prayers of thanksgiving and supplication from the sinners, and deliver us from every sin and darkness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. 
Alleluia, Alleluia. 
Christian to rescue it everywhere. Again, we pray for mercy, life, peace, health, salvation, visitation, forgiveness, remission of the sins of the servants of God who come to this holy monastery to worship, for those who work in its service, for those who support it, and for its brotherhood. Again, we pray for those who are being persecuted for the faith, especially the Christian faithful of Egypt and Syria and Iraq and across the Middle East, that the Lord God will send down upon them every spiritual weapon to endure their tribulations, and that he will grant that peace which surpasses all understanding upon the region and throughout the whole world as a foretaste of his heavenly kingdom. We have sinned and we have transgressed, and therefore your righteous anger has visited us, O Lord our God, and the darkness of death has encompassed us, and we have drawn nigh into the gates of Hades. But with compunction we cry out to you, our God, in our infirmities. Spare us, spare your people, and do not destroy us utterly. Humbly we pray you, hear us and have mercy. O Lord, who rules by life and by death, do not enclose the souls of your servants in death, but turn aside from wrath and forsake anger, for our days vanish like smoke, and our strength has wasted away, and we are perishing utterly because of our sins. Be merciful to your servants who are repenting with tears. We pray your sin and mercy. Remember that we are flesh, O Lord, whose breath when it departs shall not return. In mercy turn aside your wrath that has justly afflicted us by which is with a sword. You have grievously visited us, set right the pain and appeased the wounds that suddenly are destroying us. For the dead do not praise you, neither all those who have descended to Hades, but we the living praise you. And groaning with pain in our hearts, we pray you hear us and have mercy. More than all others, we have sinned against you, and we have transgressed from master. And if we have not acquired repentance, instead of repentance, accept our offering. And having set yourself to mercy as your Almighty, free your servants from death, bearing sickness, and grievous afflictions. Groaning in pain, we pray you quickly hear us and have mercy. Do not remember the transgressions and unrighteousness of your people, and do not enter into judgment with your servants, neither be inclined with wrath because of your servants, if you mark iniquities, O Lord, who can stand? For we are dust and ashes, and our substances is nothing before you. But as you are compassionate, the lover of humankind, show loving kindness, and do not destroy us in your anger. On account of our transgressions, we pray you, O most good God, hear us and have mercy. O oh, you who do not desire the death of sinners, but that they turn back and live as the fountain of life, give life to us who are worthy of death by your righteous judgment. For you are God, who rule by life and by death, do not destroy us in the wrath of your threatening. With great lamentation in the affliction of our hearts and with tears, we pray you hear us and have mercy. Look down with mercy upon the affliction of your people, O Lord, and showing loving kindness with your outstretched arm. Command the angel that is destroying us as once in the time of David. You gave the command that it is enough to stay his hand, that he not destroy us utterly, for we also confess it to you in repentance. As did David cry out, We have sinned and we have transgressed, and none of us are worthy of your tender mercy. But as you are compassionate yourself, who alone are being entreated because of your loving kindness, show your ancient mercy and spare the people and the sheep of your pasture. We pray you quickly hear us and have mercy. Again, we pray for those who make offerings to this holy and all venerable monastery, for those who do good works, for those who serve and those who sing, and for all the people here present who await to be prayed rich mercy. O Lord our God, accept this further supplication from your servants and have mercy on us according to multiple. Send down your compassion on us and on all your people who are waiting to be created with your mercy. For you are merciful, O God, and the lover of humankind. We offer glory to you, to the Father, to the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Let us pray to the Lord. O God, Almighty Lord of heaven and earth, and of all creation, visible and invisible, 
in your ineffable goodness. Look down upon us, your people gathered in your holy name. Be our helper and defender in this day of affliction. You know our weakness. You hear our cry and we thank you to contrition of heart. O oh Lord, who love humankind, deliver us from the impending threat of the coronavirus. Send your angel to watch over us and protect us. Grant help and recovery to those suffering, suffering from this virus. Guide the hands of physicians and preserve those who are healthy. Enable us to continue to serve our suffering brothers and sisters in peace, that together we may glorify your most honorable and majestic name of the Father and of the Son and Holy Spirit, now and ever into the ages of ages. Catechumens pray to the Lord. Let us to faithful pray for the catechumens that the Lord have mercy on them. That he teach the word of truth to them. That he reveal the gospel of righteousness to them. That he unite them to his holy orthodox Catholic and apostolic church. Save them and have mercy on them. Help them and keep them, O God, by your grace. Catechumens, bow your heads to the Lord. Lord our God, who dwell on high and observe the humble, who sent the salvation of the human race, your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and God. Look on your servants, the catechumens, who bow their heads before you. Make them worthy in due time of the washing of rebirth, the forgiveness of sins, and the robe of immortality. Unite them to your holy Orthodox Catholic and Apostolic Church and number them among your chosen flock. So that these, together with us, may glorify your all our brother the in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever into the age of ages. All catechumens depart, catechumens depart, all catechumens depart, let no catechumen remain. Let us, the faithful, again and again in peace, pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by your grace. We thank you, Lord, the God of the powers, who count us worthy now to stand before your holy altar and to prostrate ourselves before your compassion toward our sins and the sinful errors of the people. Accept our prayer, O oh God. Make us worthy to bring you prayers, supplications, and bloodless sacrifice for all your people. Enable us, whom you have placed by the power of your Holy Spirit, in this, your priestly ministry without reproach and without blame, in testimony of a pure conscience, to call on you at all times and places, so that hearing us, you will be merciful to us in the multitude of your goodness. Wisdom, for to you are due all glory, honor, and worship, to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O oh God, by your grace. Once more and often we prostrate before you and pray to you, O oh good one, and lover of humankind, that regarding our prayer, you will cleanse our souls and bodies from all defilement of the flesh and spirit, and grant us to stand innocent and uncondemned before your holy altar. Graciously grant, O oh God, that those <coughs> who pray with us may thrive in life and grow in faith and spiritual understanding. Grant that they may always worship you in fear and love, and that they, innocent and uncondemned, may partake of your holy mysteries, and that they may be counted worthy of your heavenly kingdom. That be always guarded by your mind, we may offer glory to you, to the Father, and to the Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. We offer you this in some Christ for times, the sweet spiritual things you see that might have been offered. You sit down and watch me turn the grace of your own Holy Spirit. Have mercy upon you, Lord, according to your grace. Joy and gladness of the Lord, so that 
Turn that face away. Says, "Well, I'm going to just speak to your clean heart about it. You're going right through it, and then he's casting away from the face. Take up the Holy Spirit from you. Restore it to the joy of resurrection. First, first, the Spirit. I shall teach that way to the Lord, so the God should return to me. The root of the Lord, God of Isaac, shall not destroy us. Oh Lord, thou help my lips so much for this day. For if thou hast desired sacrifice, I will give it. The first offer shall be thee. The sacrifice for the true Spirit." Try to humble heart of others. That's why. Forgive me, brothers and sisters, all my sins and transgressions, and I in turn forgive you for your sins and transgressions. Lift up your hands to the Lord and bless the Lord. Most holy and orthodox patriarchs, our metropolitan chief, our large bishop Alexander, the honorable priesthood, the diaconate Christ, for all the clergy, 
and for those who have monastic life, the monks and the nuns. May the Lord our God be with in his kingdom, always now and ever to the ages of ages. For our government, for our president, for our congress, for the judiciary, for those who serve our country, the armed forces, and elsewhere. For the Lord our God be with in his kingdom, always now and ever to the ages of ages. For the sick and the suffering, for those who endure in persecution for the Christian faith, for those who are in captivity and for their salvation, for those who are traveling by land, by sea, or by air, and all those in special need of God's grace. May the Lord our God be with in his kingdom, always, now, and ever, to the ages of ages. Amen. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection, especially our God-loving founding abbot Archimedes Theodore and priest monk Peter, May the Lord our God grant them the light of life in his everlasting kingdom, always, now, and ever, into the ages of ages. Amen. For all those for whom we have promised to pray, all those for whom we are obligated to pray, may the Lord our God remain in his kingdom, always, now, and ever, into the ages of ages. Amen. And all you Orthodox Christians, may the Lord our God remain in his kingdom, always, now, and ever, and to the ages of ages. Now and ever to the ages of ages. Amen. Peace. 
Again, we offer you the spiritual and bloodless sacrifice, and we call you, we pray, and humbly supplicate you. Send your Holy Spirit upon us, and upon these Eucharist gifts offered here. And make this bread to be the precious body of your Christ, and that which is in this cup to be the precious blood of your Christ. And we change them by your Holy Spirit. So that for those who partake of these Eucharistic gifts, they may be for the awakening of the soul, for forgiveness of sins, for communion with your Holy Spirit, for fulfillment of the kingdom of heaven, for confidence towards you, but not for judgment or condemnation. Again, we offer you this spiritual sacrifice for those fallen asleep in the faith, forefathers, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, ascetics, and every righteous spirit made perfect in faith. Especially for our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady, the birth giver of God and ever virgin Mary. Thank you. 
their peace in the deposition of the one brought to St. Joseph's son of course, the sanctified chain of the body of the one who was the of our city of disciples. And for all your saints who lose intercession down to so God, remember all those who have fallen asleep for the hope of resurrection and everlasting life, especially our God when they died in the right of Peter, the priest of Peter. Grant the rest of the light of your face shines, Lord God. Again, we pray, remember all, Lord, all of the nuts, high, and all of the glory and the truth, all of the peace, the dignity of the heart, all the virtue, and those who have been happy for us. Again, we offer you the spiritual sacrifice for the whole world, for the Holy Orthodox Catholic and Amazon Church, for those who have cured our own lives. Grant peaceful government to all civil authorities, O oh Lord, so that we and their colonists may lead religious and reverent lives in peace and quietude. Among the first, O oh Lord, remember our Metropolitan Tikhon and our Archbishop Alexander. Preserve them for your holy churches, and be safe beyond their help on the days that they may rightly teach the word of your truth. Remember, O oh Lord, this holy monastery, every monastery, all cities, towns, and villages, and for the faithful who dwell in them in the entire country. Remember, O oh Lord, travelers on water, on land, in the air, the sick, the suffering, captives of salvation. Remember, O oh Lord, those who bring offerings to the your holy churches, and those who remember the poor. Send down your mercies on all of us. And grant us to glorify and praise with one mouth and one heart your all honorable and magnificent name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and ever to the ages of ages. Amen. And may the mercies of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, be with you all. Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. For these precious gifts which have been offered and sanctified, let us pray to the Lord. That our God, the lover of humankind, who has accepted them upon his holy heavenly spiritual altar as a spiritual fragrant offering, will send down upon us divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. That we be delivered from all danger, affliction, anger, and need. Let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, and mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by your grace. That this whole day may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and without sin. Let us ask of the Lord. For an angel of peace, a faithful guide, and guardian of our souls and bodies, let us ask of the Lord. For the forgiveness and remission of our sins and transgressions, let us ask of the Lord. For everything that is good and useful for our souls and for peace in the world, let us ask of the Lord. That we may complete the remainder of our lives in peace and repentance, let us ask of the Lord. That the ending of our lives may be Christian without suffering, blameless and peaceful. And for a good account of the fearful judgment seat of Christ, let us ask of the Lord. Asking for the unity of the faith and the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us offer ourselves and one another in our whole life unto Christ our God. We entrust our whole life and hope to you, O Master, lover of humankind. And we ask and pray and prostrate humbly before you. Count us worthy to partake with a pure conscience of your heavenly and awesome mysteries of this holy and spiritual table, for remission of sins, for forgiveness of transgressions, for communion of the Holy Spirit, for inheritance of the heavenly kingdom, for confidence towards you, but not for judgment nor for condemnation. And make us worthy, O Master, that with confidence and without fear of condemnation, we may boldly call you the God of heaven, Father, and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, God be born, and peace to the peace. I will speak to the Holy Spirit, and I will let you be the Holy Spirit. In peace to the Holy Spirit, O Spirit of the Holy Spirit. The Lord is born, and the Holy Spirit 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 is born. 
Let us be attentive. Holy things are for the holy.
which is I, his house, and his righteousness endures forever. Seeing the resurrection of Christ, let us worship the Holy Lord Jesus, the only one who loves sin. We venerate your cross, O Christ. We praise and glorify your holy resurrection. You are our God. We have <coughs> we have no other besides you. We call on your name. Come on, you faithful. Let us worship the holy resurrection of Christ. But we hold joy for the whole world has come to the cross. Forever blessing the Lord, we praise his resurrection, because by enduring the cross for us, he destroyed death by death. Shine, shine, O New Jerusalem, for the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Dance, O Zion, and rejoice, and you, O pure and virtue of God, be glad of the resurrection of him born of you. O Christ, great and O holy Pascha, O wisdom, word, and power of God, grant us more perfectly perfect than any day of your kingdom. Through the intercessions of your saints, O Lord, may your precious blood wash away the sins of all those commemorated here. Meta o teu bis teus que rapis to sete cu prefiro vizel prinsa si cu dragoste se ve propias so strafo mol vivir iu iu mol iu pisupite with the spirit of God with faith and with love draw near.
Blessed is our God. Always, now, and ever, and to the ages of ages. Way of 
announcements that we'd just like to let you know that this Saturday liturgy, in commemoration of the beheading of the Holy Prophet and forerunner and Baptist John, was a private liturgy because the County of Alameda still doesn't allow us to have services indoors other than for the purpose of uploading them online so people can have access to them virtually. Tomorrow morning, however, Sunday, the monastery will be open from 9 a.m. until noon, and we will be having the Holy Liturgy at 9 a.m., so we hope you could join us. I realize we were closed last week because of the threat of thunderstorms and dry lightning and the smoke and the wildfires, but the wildfire to the southeast of the monastery is now 40% controlled, and the areas across 680 Freeway that were under an evacuation warning has now been lifted. And it's uh, slowly, surely, they are taking care of this fire, second largest in California's history. So it is safe to come. If you would like to join us tomorrow, please do so. Between 9 a.m. and noon, our gates will be open. Liturgy again at 9 a.m. I would just like to say a few words about St. John the Baptist, the baptizer of our Lord. Our Lord said that there was no man greater born of woman than John the Baptist. And in the tradition of the church, St. John the Baptist is seen as the last of the prophets and the seal of the prophets of the Old Testament. He is also seen as an apostle. And many of you would say, well, how could he be an apostle? But in the tradition of the ancient church, he is also seen as the last of the prophets and the first of the apostles. The word apostolos in Greek, it means he who is sent forth, he who is sent out. Remember that in fulfillment of the prophecies of the Old Testament, prophet Malachi and others, it was prophesied that someone would prepare the way of the Lord and make his path straight. And this is what St. John the Baptist did as the last of the prophets. He prepared the way for the Messiah, for God incarnate and the Son of God, the God-man, Jesus Christ. He prepared his way in this dimension, in this world. But he was also a forerunner and prepared the way for the Lord in the other realm, in the land of Sheol and Hades. Because according to the teaching of the ancient church, when John the Baptist was beheaded, his soul descended into Hades in order to preach to all humankind in the realm of the dead that salvation was at hand. He went to proclaim the death and resurrection of Christ that was soon to follow, to prepare the way for our Lord so that on Holy Friday, when he gave up his spirit on the cross and descended into Hades, he might resurrect with himself humankind. It's very interesting to read the prayers of the church and to read the writings of the Father. Some of you may have read Metropolitan Hilario and Alfeo's book about Christ descended to Hades, a fascinating book, a very scholarly study of ancient Christian tradition and about Christ descended to Hades. And it's very interesting that he came, many people say, well, what about the people who lived before Christ? How did they find salvation? Well, John the Baptist, after his beheading, his spirit descended to Hades to make straight the way of the Lord, to clear the way for our Savior's descent into Hades and the message of salvation. When we celebrate our Lord's resurrection on Pascha, we don't just celebrate his personal resurrection. We're celebrating the resurrection of humankind with him. St. Athanasius, the great patriarch of Alexandria, said, God became man so that we might become God. 
And so it was that God, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, he sent into Hades so that he might resurrect his people with himself. In the name of the Father and the Son.